Hello. This video is an introduction to the essay by Harvey Mansfield titled Liberty and Virtue in the American Founding. Who is Harvey Mansfield? He is a renowned professor of government who has taught at Harvard University for almost 50 years. He has also published many books and essays on political philosophy. First, let's review our course themes, which are liberty, equality, the American dream, and virtue. In our first unit, we focused mostly on liberty, especially in relation to slavery, and we considered to some degree equality as well. Although the Puritans who established the Massachusetts Bay Colony and the Separatists who established the Plymouth Colony considered themselves to be English, not American, they had a dream of establishing a city on a hill, or a civil body politic. The city on the hill emphasized religious virtues. The civil body politic emphasized civic virtues. As we move to the founding of America and the American dream, it is important to consider the relation between liberty and virtue in that founding. That is the purpose of Harvey Mansfield's essay. A major influence on the founding is the social contract philosopher's view of the state of nature, which is a philosophical construct that theorizes about the way man would live outside of civil society. If there were no laws, how would he behave? Each philosopher has a view of human nature that influences his theory. Locke's representative government was ultimately the choice of our founders. Before we begin, let's consider some words of wisdom about liberty and virtue by famous voices in political philosophy. First, Alexis de Tocqueville, who we will discuss briefly later in this presentation. He says, liberty cannot be established without morality, nor morality without faith. Next, Edmund Burke, a statesman and philosopher from the United Kingdom, who lived from 1790, 1729 until 1797, so he lived during the American Revolution and founding. Benjamin Rush, who lived from 1746 to 1813, was a young man during the founding. His youth notwithstanding, however, he was a member of the Continental Congress and he signed the Declaration of Independence. He says, liberty without virtue would be no blessing to us. Benjamin Franklin needs no introduction, I think, but we will discuss him later in the presentation. He says, sell not virtue to purchase wealth, nor liberty to purchase power. Jean-Jacques Rousseau is one of the three most influential Enlightenment philosophers. He says a country cannot subsist well without liberty, nor liberty without virtue. Defining liberty, however, is no easy task because there are so many different kinds. Natural liberty is what Jefferson refers to as a God-given right in the Declaration of Independence. But John Winthrop thought natural liberty was corrupt because it allowed people to choose good or evil. He defined civil liberty as moral because it was subject to the authority both of God's laws and of man's laws. In other words, Moral liberty for Winthrop is subject to the virtues like the Ten Commandments. With this context in mind, let us move to Mansfield's essay. At the beginning of the essay, Mansfield contrasts liberty and virtue, because the first allows a person to do what he wants, while the second guides the person to do what is right, even if it is not what he wants. Mansfield explains the problem that liberty poses if it is unconstrained by virtue. He says, a free people, with greater opportunity to misbehave than the people in shackles, needs the guidance of an inner force to replace the lack of external restraint. And virtue cannot come from within or truly be virtue unless it is voluntary and people are free to choose it. At the end of the first paragraph, he asks a question which he answers at the beginning of the second paragraph. Mansfield asks, but how do they, Americans, manage to make virtue and liberty harmonious? Mansfield replies, the answer is, in their founding. 
This presentation will introduce you to the founding as conceived by Mansfield, including its major players and their different ideas of how liberty and virtue should be harmonized. Mansfield begins with a discussion of John Locke, who is sometimes called the American philosopher because his influence is so great on the founding of America. Locke has written many famous books of political philosophy, education, and even psychology. Locke gave the founders some indispensable concepts, such as the idea of the state of nature, the social contract, but most important is his conception of natural rights. His discussion of Locke's view of virtue is complex and lengthy, owing to the fact that Locke is the most important philosopher for the American founding. Everyone should read it slowly and carefully. In his discussion of Locke, he mentions Alexis de Tocqueville, French historian, political scientist, and politician who wrote what is perhaps the most insightful analysis of Americans in his book, Democracy in America. Be sure to read the footnote at the bottom of page 7, which is a quote from his book. Benjamin Franklin's bourgeois virtue is the title of the next section. Although Franklin is certainly a household name for most Americans, Mansfield wants to explain his concept, his concept of bourgeois virtue. He defines it and contrasts it with the Republican virtue of Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Later, we will discuss Ben Franklin's virtue project, but this is an example of his plan for improvement using his virtues. Rousseau is the other great influence on the American founding, and his influence is most evident on politicians who identify themselves as progressives. Mansfield mainly contrasts Rousseau with Franklin, but Rousseau's ideas about the social contract, and especially private property, contrast sharply with John Locke's. Rousseau defines these three kinds of liberty. Mansfield also includes a section titled Montesquieu and Republican Virtue. Montesquieu's most famous work is The Spirit of the Laws, and he is the one responsible for our idea of separating powers. Montesquieu had his own version of the state of nature, and equality is an important factor in his viewpoint. The next to last section of the essay is titled Publius on Ambition. Publius refers to the three writers of the Federalist Papers, 85 short essays meant to persuade the people in every state to ratify the Constitution. Alexander Hamilton wrote 53 and co-authored three with James Madison. James Madison wrote 26 and co-authored three with Hamilton. John Jay wrote five. With this introduction, you should now be ready to read the entire essay and answer the questions assigned to you by your group.